Ashnak Durbatuluk, Ashnak Gimbatul, Ashnak Trakatuluk, Agburzum Ishi Krimpatul. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. You are the nine, ancient lords and warriors of men, ring bearers, Ulairi. I summon you now to Isengard to fulfill your oath. For you are not bound in service to Sauron. You are slaves to the One Ring, and I am its master. You now serve the Orthanc and the White Hand, and as my agents of order, you will bring peace to all of Middle-earth. Those that refuse my rule must be exterminated. Come now, I await your arrival, for we have much work to do. Greetings my friends and welcome back for the seventh episode of our Isengard campaign, Third Age to the War, Divide and Conquer. The weather outside is absolutely kind of weird actually, it's it's awfully sunny, but the wind is blowing like crazy. It's kind of thematic to be playing a Total War game, I don't know, I always love playing strategy games when it's like really trash weather outside, just don't want to go outside, just whip out some Total War, have some fun. Anyway, last episode we got rid of Rohan, they are now a rebel faction because they no longer have any family members left to take over command. So we'll be mopping up the rebel territories of Tirithanduin, this place, was it Oldberg? And, uh, well, Rockburg we already took. We are now bordering the elves of Lothlorien. Soon enough we'll border either Mordor at Karanhat or Gondor when indeed they do reclaim it. However, they will keep each other nicely occupied. So now expansion is just the name of the game, really. We need to get some more territory so we can boost up our economy, as well as waiting, of course, for our Nazgul friends to arrive. That will be very, very helpful. The elves I'm not too scared of. They are... they are strong. But we are also pretty strong. And we can outproduce them, so... We are the fighting Urukai, perfected. Come to think of it. The orcs were made out of the elves, the Urukai were made out of the orcs, so we're just superior elves, basically. <laughs> Some people are going to go nuts in the comment section right now. How dare you say something like that? Oh, hello, Dundant. And eventually, we'll also have to take care of Anadwaith. They have some wealthy settlements that uh, I'd like to take. And when indeed I do go to war with Gondor, which is unavoidable and is part of my my own kind of victory conditions, it would be nice if we could sandwich them, attack them from Kirithiaur over here, as well as on uh, Anorian, Minas Tirith. Alright, talk to the Guldur for a military unit. Ah, yes. I want some more Dunish spearmen. Give me more. Without question, my lord. Alright, let's see. Anduin Vale hates us. No surprise there. Isengard retraining some troops. New mission. End of turn report. Alright. We are growing there. I think last time we were at like 58%, so we are getting better and better and better, which is fantastic. Uh, gosh, I'm a little, bit, a little bit flustered. What do I want to do? Let's see. Can't build anything there yet. Population is growing and growing. We're almost there. Foldberg. My mouse is acting up again. Let's see. What do I want in Foldberg? Kind of want to upgrade my roads. That is always quite useful. It is quite expensive. Most of my money gone. I'm not sure that's worth it. We are building in most places. Okay. So only two settlements I can build. What can I build in Guinea at? Roads? <laughs> mines? Eh, not very good mines. I'll get the carpet this hut there to make the mines cheaper. And then in Foldberg... I think we'll get the camp guard. Hmm. Nah, actually. I don't know. I don't know. I need more money, really. Uh, militia garrison. Also, Lurt is a little bit too good to just be wasting here. We need to put him on the front line again. Let us get... I'm <laughs> really stumped here. Let us get... Let's get the cam guard, why not? It's actually kind of cheap. And then let's pull out some troops from over here. Some newly trained or retrained troops. And they will leave with Lurtz. And I'll put, like, a unit of pikemen there. Actually. Do I have any units that get free upkeep? Mm, not yet, because I can't train any. However, if I get... A Reaver unit, they will get free upkeep as soon as the barracks are finished, and then the pikemen can leave with Lurtz. They can just uh, be one of the armies that go after one of the rebel settlements, like Aldberg, for example. Nothing too urgent there. Alright, anything else I can train or get? Ballista, always, yes. And let's get some raiders. 
I do want to take Tirithanduin, so I'm going to send one of my spies. Let's see, not you, you, to check out Tirithanduin, see what kind of garrison they have. Rockberg, I want that to grow as quickly as possible, but it will take a while. Although, as many people have pointed out, if you keep a large enough garrison, it will speed up um, any capturing of settlements or um, conversion of culture. Um, you just go to Tirithanduin. Ugluk, you can take that army. Uh, take the Ballista as well, so you can knock down a wall. Alright, that should be more than enough. Now let's get a watchtower. Whee. I'll clean up those rebel armies at some point. It's just something I'm not too fussed about, so... There's no rush there. Anyway, I hope we're all doing well. It's been, uh... It's been another day since I last uploaded, as I've slowed down my schedule a little bit. But, um... It actually didn't negatively impact the video too much. I think it actually... Might be better for my channel, in a way, because... I don't know, more people are hyped for a new episode. Oh, sure. There's less of that, um, like, throwing too many episodes your way in a short amount of time and you get like a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, was worth a shot. Uh, but a lot of people seem to enjoy the previous episode, which always makes me happy. I do read all the comments, of course. I also, in the last episode, asked um, kind of a question about your voting patterns for uh, faction votes. And that was with regards to Galo doing a new faction poll for his next faction. Uh, which, by the looks of it, will be the Woodland Realm, which I find a little bit surprising, seeing as he does, just did an Anduin Veil vale campaign. So he'll be largely fighting the same enemies, or the same enemy factions. Fighting on the same battle maps as well. Um, but then again, the Kalmar Union between the Woodland Realm and the Elves of Lothlorien does sound pretty damn cool. So I can understand why people would vote for him. I personally voted for Mordor. And a lot of people actually gave Mordor as an example, because I asked for your voting patterns and a lot of you said that you take the the person that's doing the factions or doing the, the campaigns into account for when you make your decision. And a lot of people use the argument of, and that's why I'm not voting Mordor, because Galdu wouldn't like Mordor, it wouldn't be good with Mordor. I think he'd be good with Mordor, I don't think he'd like Mordor. Uh, and that's exactly why I voted Mordor, because... Galu is still the lead developer of Divide and Conquer, of course, and... I still feel if you want to have a good insight on how to change certain factions or if you're like, okay, this faction is a little bit boring or isn't really up to par with some of the factions that have been overhauled, playing them is the best way to get an idea of what you want to do in order to make them better. And Mordor is one of those factions that, in my opinion, doesn't get enough love. Dale and Runer at war. And I might be a little bit biased because Mordor was, of course, uh, it still is my, my most popular campaign I've ever done. Lots of people joined when I did the Mordor campaign. Uh, so I might be a little bit biased, but I think there's there's some things you can do to spice up the Mordor campaign. And I think if Galu played Mordor, he would he would realize that as well. He would see that. He would know that. So that's why I personally... That, that kind of influences my voting a little bit. Then again, having Galu do an Isengard campaign would also be a lot of fun. Although it did one fairly recently. But I'm all in favor so far. Although I've only scratched the surface of just completely including the Isengard Unleashed sub-mod uh, in Divide and Conquer as, you know, part of the, the, the main the main game. Although, with that changes in version 5, there would be too many units, so they'd have to delete one unit in order to make room. That's what we had to do. And you guys haven't noticed yet, but um, it was Sol who implemented the Isengard Unleashed sub-mod for my version of version 5. And he actually deleted the farmhand pikemen out of a personal vendetta against them. So farmhand pikemen will not be seen in this campaign. And no one has noticed so far. That's a... Oh, hello. What the hell kind of name is that? Razbarathon. You want to take Tirithanduin? I hope I can reach it. No, I can't reach it. Oh, it's annoying. <laughs> Maybe it'll soften up the garrison for me a little bit. But that army could easily take it. They have a ballista as well. They could easily mop up those rebels. Uh, just some bandits and Norvanian troops. I'm surprised Rohan never went for it. Uh, and you can go for Aldberg, I suppose. Plop down a watchtower. Yep, okay. Uh, my economy is kind of really bad, to be honest, because I get a lot of King's Purse with the one ring, but I'm just wasting so much money. I have no income. Like, my trade is really low. Taxes aren't that high. The farming, mining, virtually non-existent. Isengard got the slave hall. 
I can get the upgraded barracks, but I can't even afford new troops. Might get the boar breeder, that wouldn't be bad. No, I should save for the upgraded mines, because that is such a big increase. Yeah, that doubles my mining economy effectively. It really does double it, because here there's... Stupid mouse, stop double clicking. Like, I'm just clicking once and it like double clicks and deletes it. And then it works, I have no idea what's happening. You have one mine here, and you have two mines here. All that just to make a lame joke about doubling our economy. Alright, so you go there, let's... Hmm, should I give you some extra force? I could give you this ballista, aha. And maybe a pikeman unit? Don't have any. An extra archer unit would be nice though. Hmm, we'll put you in trollway. Oh, wait, I needed you there. I need you, hunting lodge. Will I still have enough money for the upgraded mines? Probably not. No, scratch that. Yeah, still won't have enough money. Although if I win some battles, then sure. No sleep in here. Plop down a watchtower. In case the elves come after us, at least we'll be aware of it. So yeah, it's a little bit slow now. I'm going to deny that. Because my economy is just not there yet. I'm going to leave. Uh, no, I'm going to put you in a fort. And then push you towards Durwath, I think. Maybe I should start... Oh, sorry, my dad started vacuum cleaning in the background. <laughs> I hope my microphone doesn't pick it up. But maybe I should start looking towards Enidwise territory a little bit sooner rather than later. I don't know, just most settlements here are not that wealthy. I'd have to start looking towards Casa Doom. That would be quite nice, though, if I could take the Mithril mines. And then I could equip my berserkers with Mithril armor. Oh. <laughs> or trolls with Mithril armor. Now, that would be something else as well. I'd love to see it. This game does have, or the Ising Out Unleashed submod does have some special trolls, which I will hopefully showcase in a couple couple turns. And with a couple turns, eh, probably like 50 more until I get a decent economy and I can start trunking out my, my good units. Yeah, that's something the AI, of course, doesn't care about. The Wrath of Kant. Had they made that choice yet? I don't think they have. Aldberg! Oh, hello, Mordor. I could just beat up that Mordor army and then take Aldberg. Yeah, screw it. Fuck Mordor. We are enemies. And they have such... Oh, this is such a trash army. This is one of the most trashy Mordor armies I've ever seen. Alright, our first confrontation against Mordor. We have already dissed Sauron more than enough. He does not like us, but now we're actually putting deeds to our words. And they're actually going to beat up that army and take Aldberg. Ha! Fools! Alright, let us set up. I have a lot of archers, they have none. So my plan, and seeing as they have pretty low armor and shield stats, etc. My plan is basically to shoot them before they reach us. Such a good plan, is he? So creative. Isn't that your plan every single time? Shut up. Don't judge me. Or as that orc just said, I don't think so. Come forth, my pretties. Orc maulers. <laughs> Oh, we have a full unit of berserkers here as well. Two full units with lurts as well. Ah, oh, look at that. That is just a big line of berserkers. I love it. All right, archers. Get ready to fire on those Morgul rats. Or not. Try fire. Yeah, just go ahead and ruin your bow, why don't you? Is he really going to take a defensive position? My ballista will just fire at you a couple times, and then you'll... Pr <laughs> AI, you're weird. Why do you first not take defensive position and then you do? The AI does work in mysterious ways, I must say. That again, maybe the AI thinks the same of me. Who knows? Maybe you guys think the same of me. That is the thing though, when I watch other YouTubers, they all have like different strategies and I kind of... I kind of realize that I do pretty much always use my same kind of battle lines and battle plans. I'm very repetitive in that case. I'm not really that creative. And lots of people always say, oh, put your archers behind your infantry. You're always putting them in front. And I do that for the increased range. But some people do just play the game entirely different. And I feel like when I was younger, I used to be more creative with my battle blinds. But now I just kind of use what works, I guess. And these battle lines have gotten me through many campaigns. Maybe once I have some pikes and Urukai infantry, I'll, I'll start being a little bit more creative. All right, uh, can you fire on... York Maulers. Although they are quite weak to my archer. Probably the weakest unit to archer fight in the game. There's nothing quite like 
just nailing those units with Ithilian Rangers when you're playing as Gondor. We are hitting you, you know. I'm hitting you quite hard, actually. But it is the scariest unit in the, the roster here. And that's not because they're scary. That's because the rest of the roster is damn poor. Alright, there we go. We've hit that magic threshold of 3%. They're just like, screw this. We're going in hot. Archers! Get ready. No, not yet. There we go. 4%. That's the magic threshold. The new magic threshold. Come on then, archers. You should be almost in your ranges up to here because that's where the yellow changes from red to green. Almost. Hold. Hold. Don't be like that guy in Helm's Deep who fired too soon. You all know who I'm talking about. Rest in peace, that actor. The bowmaster. Ah. Uh. Morgul rats. <laughs> I kind of like this feud between us and Mordor. It's, 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 it's not often that you fight against an evil faction as an evil faction. That doesn't happen all that often. Or a good faction against a good faction for that matter. Unless you're playing like Ered Lewin that goes evil for example. Or Khan that goes good. Then yes. But this is all just some orc on orc action. Except we are better. Fight on the Maulers and the Fighters, they, I think they have one shield stat from having a, a sword. And I'll pull back my Ballista when they get too close because I don't want to waste any of them. Only 18% so far, that's a surprise. Send in the Berserkers. Send in the Goats. If I ever play an Edibot campaign, I'll mod in Goat Riders just to trigger Galu. Why are you guys running? No, 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 no. Run that away. My mouse is being annoying again. Thank you. They will run the moment they face Lurts. I'll throw in an Uruk Tide as well. Alright, fight on the back lines. Pikes, you can push. They will break, won't they? I am you, but better. Significantly better. Ah, I'm surprised I haven't broken yet immediately. Though I could use some cavalry, that would be quite useful. Do not have that sadly. Alright. The Org Band's just jamming in the back there. Let them sing a new tune. So many puns because their name is Org Band. Alright, sentries. You are free to destroy those guys. 75% might be a bit of an issue, but that's not really a problem because I don't really care too much about destroying this army. I just want the settlement of Aldeberg. Alright, if you guys could fire on them. Don't fire at will. Fire at my targets. You have no free will. Alright, flank around those orc bands and they will break. Oh. We can probably get a couple more volleys off. Uh, we're not going to get the uh, necessary amount. Mm, no. But still a very good result. We lost 13 and we crushed that army. They're gone. Oldberg belongs to me, buddy. You better get running. Alright, let's execute. Uh, let's ransom. Oh, never mind. Same thing. Thank you. Bye bye. Oldberg is mine. I could just straight up assault the place. What is it? Is it a town or a castle? That's a large town. I have a ballista. They do have woodland hunters, which are a very good archer unit. Like a surprisingly good archer unit, because they have five missile attack, which is really, really good. They also have a bonus against the walks. Hmm. I didn't know that. <laughs> Cell swords as well. <laughs> yeah, they got some scary troops. Then again, I don't want to wait out... How many turns? Like seven? Six. I don't want to wait six turns. Especially because Mordor will know that I send another army to clean me up. Like, <laughs> pick on someone your own size. Nah, we're gonna go for it. Captain Fast Helm, you better hold fast to your home. Oh. Snow. I don't like snow very much. Ah, uh, it's all right in small quantities. Anyway, I don't want to go in on this side because that's a very well defended side. If they got woodland hunters all around that wall there. That is no bueno. I think I'd rather get in from this side. The town square is in a bit of an annoying position as well. Hmm. Honestly, I think we're better off going through the wall there instead of trying to go through a gate. 
tear down the wall, and then we'll sort them out. And if I position myself far enough at the start, then they won't even try to stop me. All right, now we get close so we don't miss all our shots. And just take down the wall. Those Whitland Hunters, though, they are lethal. And they have very cozy looking hats. I wish I had a hat like that. In green, though, not brown. Green superior. Cell swords, those are going to be tough. That's where the Berserkers come in, though, for the AP. I kind of love that they're playing the Rohan theme as well as we're about to crush some motor hit him. <laughs> It's not very uplifting for them now, is it? It's kind of ironic, I suppose. Peasant scouts. Very dangerous. Well, they can be, at least. Alright, we should have enough ammo to take down that wall, as well as those two towers. The two towers. Um, and then we can just waltz in there. And if they try to stop us, we'll kill them. I can take control of their walls. If we're fighting here, that's an opportunity. If they're fighting on the town square, which is more likely... That's not really worth it. Alright, let's take down those towers kind of as a, a backup plan. They are moving... Hmm, they're moving some units. And then the raiders for support, you never know. Those peasant scouts can be very dangerous as well. So let's prepare for them, if indeed they want to act tough. There we go. They activated the tower for like one shot. And I would take down that tower, and then I'll have a little bit of ammo left, but not a whole lot. Oh, they're just marching by, I see. Uh, I'm getting a couple volleys in. Wasn't really my intention, but okay. He's bringing in woodland hunters. Um, right, tower is down. That tower I don't think will get triggered if I keep my distance. That's a big if. Um, okay, archers. I don't know if I can win just an archer fight. Okay, they're running in there. Um, hmm. This is uh, getting a little bit annoying. They're going on the walls. Could try to break down the wall, you know. Those woodland hunters are very dangerous on walls. That's actually the kind of situation I wanted to avoid, and now I got myself into it. Well, damn diddly damn it. Alright, send in the Berserkers. Send in the Pikemen as well. You guys are AP, right? You should be good against Cell Swords. Ah, my blister's out of ammo. Curses. Which tower's fighting? I hear a tower fighting. That tower is seriously fire. Oh my lord. Bullshit. BS. I call BS. You guys get out of here. Fired on that archers. Although I, I need to get them off the wall though. The cell swords are dropping very, very fast at least. And I'll put my berserkers on the wall. I can already sneak them past. Should be able to. Hello there! <laughs> e how are you doing, buddies? They're gonna break. They are gonna break. They're gonna rout like the little sons of bitches that they are. Look at that. They're just steamrolling them. Push, push, push. I'll sacrifice one unit of Furukai Arches. That is totally fine. Oh, you're out of ammo? I'm not using my Donate Slayers. Yeah, those cell swords are getting destroyed. Lutz! I need you, buddy. Get in there. I want this settlement by nightfall. Run! Break! Come on, you're wavering. Don't these guys... They cause fear, right? Yeah, they frighten nearby enemy infantry. But the archers not count as infantry? They should. Footfolk. Yes, steamroll them. Sons of bitches. Oh, hello there. Oh, that's annoying. Completely missed that. Peasant scouts, man. Best value unit. If only I didn't spend so much time 
bickering about my mouse, things could work out. There we go, enemy general dead. If that doesn't route those guys on the wall, ah, we go. No more! The tyranny of the woodland hunters ends today. Ah, and they're all routing. Easy peasy. I mean, losing 294, as I always say, more than I would like, but not totally terrible. The ones we lost are, ooh, Bane Guard. And Pikeman as well, not fantastic. Hmm, nah, yeah, could have gone better, could have gone better. And there we go. Oldberg is now ours. A settlement I didn't want to take per se, because now we do border Mordor Gondor, whoever has it at this point. I, f I think I'm going to occupy it though. I'll, I'll sack it, that doesn't destroy any buildings I think, just get rid of some population. So. That does give me some extra cash. Is that enough for my mines? It is. Wunderbar. Very nice. Okay, so Oldberg is ours. Uh, we'll get some culture. I can also get mines here. Mm, they're not that good, but they're all right, I suppose. Okie do. So, who holds the border from Mordor? They might send another army, and they're going after Tirith Anduin. I'm afraid I just need to suck that up. Don't think I have a choice, really. I'm, I'm thinking here. Uh, I don't want to fight them just yet. I don't want them to take Tirith Anduin, though. However, they can easily win that battle, alright? Their units are much better than those rebels. What do I do? Do I already declare myself against the elves of Lothorian? I don't know, man. They're scary. I need a lot more wargs and horses if I want to take them down. And I don't really have too many. I could crush that army with these. But then the question is, you know, what comes afterwards? Alternatively, I could try to take Kalanhad. Oh, hello, Boromir. You're looking quite spiffy in your armor. Or I could send the Ugluk army <laughs> straight to Kazadum. Now, I would send them back and fight Enadwaith. Take goons, settlements like that. I do need some more knowledge here. I don't really know what's going on in these regions. I'm going to get an extra spy. Uh, spy, 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 spy. That is quite useful. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, what do I do with Ugluk? I think I'll send Ugluk to take care of those rebel armies first and foremost. We'll see what happens at Tirith Anduin. It's annoying. I really wish I could have grabbed it. That would have made my realm quite impressive already. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's not the worst that could have happened. Nor is it the best. How much am I losing to Devastation? 424. That is worth to get Ugluk involved. Alright, let's end the turn. Then again, if I get my Nazgul, that will make the war against Enedwaith, I think, significantly easier. Solely based on the fact that Enedwaith in general doesn't have the best morale. And the Nazgul, of course, are great at causing fear. That is their main strength, and that's also your main strength as Mordor, to have them uh, cause so much fear. So that would be a very, very helpful tool. Won't help as much against... The elves, of course, because they have much higher morale in general. But uh, Enedwaith, not so much. But yeah, I, d I don't really know how strong Enedwaith is at the moment. I'm not sure how the war is going. I can talk about the Fog of War again at turn 50, so that's only 10 turns from now. It's not that long, but still. Ah, yes! Silently, like the whistling wind, the horses swept through the ghostly forest, pounding steadily past trees, bushes, and foliage. The riders were unrelenting, eagerly approaching their destination, drawn to the dark power yonder to which they were bound. From the top of the Orthang, the wide valley of Nan Kurunir was clearly visible. The eyes searched for that telling dust cloud, that sign that they had arrived. Then, at a distance near the edge of the forest, the prize showed itself to the watcher. He eagerly descended from the dark tower and began to walk towards the gate of Isengard. The sage-like character silently exited Isengard and stood awaiting the arrival of the horseman. The defining moment had arrived. The horseman reached the figure outside the Orthanc and came to a halt. The leading rider dismounted and the others followed suit. Slowly he approached the figure. I can't do an Nazgul voice. We have come, Lord Saruman. Command us. I went into my Christopher Lee voice. I welcome you, O Nazgul, for we have work to do. A cold shadow swept over Isengard, spreading far and wide, blowing through every window and every door, casting a darkness around the hearts of the living. A Nazgul had arrived in Isengard. There we go. Who is it? Oh, it's two Nazgul, yes. Zagar. 
Uh, if you want to read through the entire history, you can go ahead. But if I read through that, that's the end of the episode. So I'll just, I'll just scroll through it slowly. I do believe Galu has videos on those as well. Oh, and my game crashed. <laughs> I think one of the Nazgul might be bugged. Um, I'll see that I can fix it and be back in just a moment. All right, it works fine now. I'm not really sure what the problem was. Anyway, here is the um, info on Ganaltan. If you want to read through that, you can go ahead. But as I said, Galu has made videos on these. Reading through it with his majestic voice. Anyway, he is from Gant. I wonder which units they get. So curious. Let's see, what do you get? You get Nazgai. Okay, that's a pretty basic Nazgul unit. That's what they normally get in the base game. So nothing special there. What does Ganaltan get? Knights of the White Hand. Ooh, those are war riders, my friends, with two hit points, 25 defense, and 11 attack in a general unit. That is going to be the most broken OP unit you've ever seen. <laughs> okay, broken OP might be a little bit too much, but that man can lead an army to crush all of Erdwyth. All right, we know they hold Gund, and Dunland holds both the border and Fort Ryu, which is good. Then we can focus on Gund, and... Dude, these guys alone could take it with these. You go south. I'll send over the Ugluk force in a bit. But I could try to muster an army of whatever I have lying around. You really don't need much. Uh, yeah, let's get some extra... F he really doesn't need much. With his own army, well, with his own unit of Knights of the White Hand. Nothing can really stop him, to be fair. Alright, um, you guys as well join him. Have I got any other units that I can... Yeah, you can join as well. Zagar, I'm going to put you in... A, you probably take so much upkeep as well. Yeah, that's going to cost me a little bit, so I'm going to put you in a fort for now. Poor Nazgul. Came all the way from Mordor just to be stuck in a fort. Let's get some half-orcs and a ballista. Always take ballista, my friends. Alright. The elves probably have it. Not yet. Not yet. I do have a spy here that I should probably move around a little bit. Oh, he's stuck. No! No, stop that. That's not worth it. I do want Lurtz to put a watchtower a little bit further. Stay on the road. There you go. Okay. Nothing to report yet. Zaglag. Whoa, back Blackberry. Zaglag. Uh, Ugluk, you can mop up those armies. It's not the most fun battles, but they have to get done. Baldrit. Yeah. Not sure which cunning plan you'll whip out this time, but I think you're screwed. Peasants. One step above peasants, 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 peasant leader, ballista. Shouldn't be too hard. Alright, let's mop them up. Army number one, let's go. Alright, I've gone for a bit of a weird position. But I'm just mainly going to use my ballista, which he will probably do as well. Um, and use my archers against a fire on them. We do have a nice line of pikemen in case the peasant scouts get a little bloodthirsty. I do have wargs and cavalry of my own, which are significantly better than their cavalry. So the only units I need to watch out for would be normally the Rohan Bodyguard, but right, seeing as they're rebels, their general actually gets a unit of cell swords instead of a Rohan Bodyguard. So that's a big relief, actually. Come on, fight me. Don't be a coward. Don't be a little wimp. Fight me. Hey, how do you like them apples, sucker? Nope, already triggered them enough, it seems. Let's turn off fire mode. As cool as it looks, it is less accurate, so... Doesn't get my preference. Come on, horsies! You want to fight? I'll give you a fight. I'll give you a good scuffle. They got the hill advantage, so they're probably still in range. Oh, I'm still in range as well. There you go! <laughs> it's a nice ballista you got there, chump! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I make the weirdest sound sometimes, but... I apologize. Alright, now what? <laughs> That's also what the AI is thinking, they're like, oh crap. What do we do now? You get charged because I don't want your scouts to run into my infantry, they just do too much damage. I would rather intercept you before you reach them. In range of my archers, obviously. Although I would see the AI just running straight into my pike's head first. Charge of the walks. They will eat those peasant scouts with the. Oh, look at that. They're getting so deep in there. That unit is toast, or should be toast at the very least. Didn't actually take that many casualties. Can you sort off? 
Are you seriously charging into Oogluk? Oh, come on, mouse, not now. We need to charge. Alright, kind of charge then. Hello there! You will not enjoy this counter charge, I can tell you that much. Leave Oogluk alone! It didn't do nothing. Right, pull out of that. Oh, just you can fight on the cell, so it's uh, quite an annoying unit. Come on, peasant scouts, get eaten already. Wargs reign supreme, don't you know? Alright, I need to leave, because they got spears. Wargs don't like spears! Spears Morgan. I don't like him either. I don't blame the wogs. <laughs> Alright, Reavers. Oh, come on, mouse. Yeah, I'm getting a new mouse. Fuck this shit. If anyone has any recommendations for a good mouse, let me know. I currently have a Logitech G300S, which I thought was a good mouse. And it was. It served me well up until two weeks ago, where it suddenly just pooped out on me. Very annoying. Anyway, we don't let that stop us. Um, what am I doing with my life? Right, I'm charging those guys. Good. Surprised they're not breaking. They are sturdy ones, aren't they? It's kind of weird to see a Rohan general on foot. <laughs> kind of irks me a little bit. Rubs me the wrong way. Speed it up a little bit. It's over anyway. Those peasants will rout. If I had an Asgul here, I could just mop them up. Yeah, I'm losing horses because I, they're not running when I tell them to. Alright, let's just calf sandwich these sons of bitches. And let that be the end of it. We don't need 85%. It's a rebel army. That was a lackluster charge. That was a lackluster charge. Come on, third time's the charm. Mmm, better. But not perfect. Calf sandwich! <laughs> yeah, this should be done now. Right? Nice. Wasn't really the point, but anyway, 54 casualties. I can live with that. That's pretty damn good. Nice. All right, very nice. A little bit of extra cash as well. Let's mop this guy up as well, Captain Fram. Captain Fram, your reign of terror here. Yeah. Do I dare auto resolve it? I'm just not in the mood to fight that battle. Let's auto resolve it. Fuck it. Yeah, that's pretty good. As long as Ugluk himself isn't dead. Okay, he's not. Good. All right. I think that's. The last of Rohan, right? They are now officially just gone. Reduced to atoms. Dusted. Alright, that army goes back home. Nazgul will get troops there. Then you can march on to Enedwyth. I'm not sure if I should declare war on Enedwyth. They're one of the few factions I'm not at war with yet. Oh, also I can still talk to Dol Guldur. And uh, get another unit. Hopefully a good one. I have another proposal then, yes. There you go. Uh, thank you very much. Kamul, you'll soon bow to me as well. Tony Spearman, let's go! This game hates me. I just, I, I can't see myself needing anything else besides these guys. It's one of the best cav units in the game now. What can you do against such reckless hate? You want to know the answer? Absolutely nothing. Alright, uh, it's an intern. As long as nothing too crazy happens now, we can just slowly expand. Take settlements left, right, and center. Though taking Goon does put me in a little bit more of a dangerous spot with uh, Gondor. But they're so busy with Mordor, I just can't see themselves throwing units my way. There's a couple of white settlements that I would love to take. And if I manage to crawl my way towards the, the coastline... That could be good for my economy if I can get a port there. 
could get a lot of trade going. But we'll see, of course. I'm, I'm kind of happy that Donland is doing all right, as far as I can tell, so that's good. Of course, I don't just want to run into Minadieth, for example. That would be a little bit too far. All right. Oh, look. Come back home. Lorien's under attack. Oh, Dol Guldur is making a play. Well, they still don't hold the, the wall, so... Can the spy get out of here? Yeah, he can. Oh, hello there. You schnock. You want to have a go, mate? Uh, I think old work could hold. Let's retrain Lurts, probably get some armor there. Um, hmm. Let's get the Temple of Melkor, why not? Even though it costs me a lot of money. Alright. 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 Send them down. And then these guys. That's a pretty good army. Pretty happy with that. You just chill for now. Ah, oh, to be fair. I could just get the Ugluk army up north with Saruman and just crush the elves. Especially now that Dol Guldur is apparently also going after the elves. I assume it's Dol Guldur. Can't imagine anyone else attacking Lothlorien. I, f I could just go for it. I don't need... Hmm. I don't know. It's a little bit risky, but I have Ugluk, Saruman, and Nazgul, and I have decent troops. I could pinch away a couple settlements, like Edrakan, for example. They've abandoned their plan of taking to the Thunderweed, then I can go after it, yeah. Uh, sorry, Ugluk. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're just going back and forth, and you're probably like, dude, make up your mind. I could summon the Nazgul north to take command of this army. I don't want... Uh, I could... Yeah, I could put him in the same army as Saruman. There's nothing stopping me from having multiple generals in one army. They do get some debuffs because of it, but eh. I don't really care too much for it. I, I, I think it's worth... Um, you know, I think it's worth the, uh, the downgrade in order to get the extra forces on the field and the extra special abilities. You can pop the voice of Saruman and the screech of the Nazgul at the same time. That would be quite effective. And then Ganaltan can continue his reign of terror in the south. Towards Enedwaith. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Lurt can keep Oldberg. Hold off any attacks from Mordor. Which I doubt will be many. Unless... I need to check that. Unless they have taken Karendros again. That's... I feel like Karendros right now is the most important settlement in that war. If they do not hold Kerendros, then they cannot hold on to Kalanhad over here because they can't ship troops over. Who holds Ker Oh my god, that's a big Gondor army. Gondor holds Kerendros and Western Osgur. They cannot ship new troops over. This is a big Gondor army. Watch them just ignore Kalanhad and go straight for Oldberg. Because <laughs> the AI just hates the human player. Alright, you go to Tirithanduin. You go to Rockburg. Can I upgrade Rockburg yet? No. What about Eisenrun? Uh, like two more turns. And Ginaltan. Let us march towards Gint. Oh, there's barely anyone there. Hello there. Chief. Oh, faction. Ah, look at that. Some dumb shit foresters. Nice. Six missile attack. Oof. That is where the, uh, the riders will come in handy. Handy dandy. Are you going to fort? Alright, I got a little bit of cash left. Isengard, building the mines. Isengard can't do anything there. Fallberg, nothing too crazy there. I want to get some cheap buildings that throw in a little bit of uh, economic boon, like bull breeders, for example. And that's all that. <laughs> that's all she wrote. I'm just really developing on the fact that my units are so good. Because my economy isn't really the reason I'm doing so well. But it's, it's getting better. It's getting better. Alright. Oh, you're... What are you doing, dude? If you go after Tirithanduin, I swear to God, I'll let you take it and then I'll besiege you out. And then I'll put the Nazgul up north to take all your precious settlements, you stupid fool. The, one, the only thing I'm scared of is their Doomstag, because they, they don't have the resources to put many troops on the field, except with their Doomstag. That is the only way they can ever field a large enough army for me to be concerned about. Their regular armies and the ones they can pull out of their settlements in short notice simply aren't enough. But I think going north is a good idea because that puts us close to Khazad Doom, and I think if I take those mines, I can fund entire wars just on that settlement. 
The Anduin Vale settlements I'm not too interested in. They're not really part of my victory condition either. My personal victory condition. I don't really care too much for them. And I don't think their settlements are all that good. But I might be mistaken, who knows. But we'll take Gund in the south, we'll maybe get a couple reinforcements, trickle them down whenever they're available. Um, but the plan is to keep pushing and take settlement over here, I think. Okay, anyway. I did get a question, and it's one that I've been wondering myself as well. What happens if one of our Nazgul die? Do they come back like they do for Mordor? I'm not sure, actually. I believe they do, but I'm not 100% certain. Anyway, I don't really hope to figure it out, so uh, let's win this battle without too many casualties, yeah? Alright. Ooh, I wish I spawned on this side and I could put my archers up here. Anyway, the moment you've all been waiting for, of course, one of the new units introduced by the Isengard Unleashed sub-mod. There we are. The Knights of the White Hand. They are an elite war unit, which I very much like, because in the Isengard regular campaign, you only get one war unit. There is only one war unit in the game. Uh, well, that's not entirely correct. Angmar and Gundabad are a couple of different war units. But we only get the one war marauder unit. Um, so it, then it does make sense to get a more elite war unit, put some Urukai on there, give them some armor, make them absolutely just fantastic. And there with the Nazgul as well. <sighs> very, very cool. They're gonna do most of the heavy lifting, I kinda assume. Uh, I'm gonna put my ballista here. I could use my archers to push onto that hill and provide cover with the Knights of the White Hand. Uh, you guys defend the ballista in case that is needed. Stay in the back. Be careful for those dub shit foresters. They are. They they sound very dangerous, on paper. Okay. You can cover that approach in case they try anything funny. Any unit that marches on the open field will get absolutely humiliated. Oh, are Dubshit Foresters... Okay, no, they are archers. I, I, for a moment I thought they were javelin units because they were holding spears. But they are archers. I'm pretty sure that's a new unit from the end of the way all. We have cell swords and bandits. So I assume the AI end of the actually bought some mercenaries. Interesting. Doesn't always happen. There we go. Terror of the Nazgul. Oh, they use poison arrows as well. Damn. That is an annoying unit. They're quite accurate. Immediately ruining my morale. My, my, my. You are a bold one. And you guys cover that approach in case they send an infantry unit round, which they might do. Alright. Ballista unit. Fire. You may fire when ready. It's a good thing I kept some extra infantry there, in case he sends his cell swords in that direction. But the forces are the most annoying one. Oh, they have such good accuracy, they're fighting in such a beautiful angle. Ah, oh, it's not working though. It is not working. Come on, step outside, I want to use my knight to the white hand. I can't charge in there really, because then the AI, the AI doesn't like charging inside of a settlement. Even if it's just a village, eh, they just kind of mess up a little bit. Bandits, you're going the wrong way! Come here, I'm such a juicy snag, don't you want to fight me? Oh, just look how cool they look. Look at them! Alright, what's going on? Dubshit Foresters are almost dead. Those guys have decided to run. No, they're kind of going back and forth. They're a little bit scared. Alright. Send in the Reavers. Nice bandits. Very nice. Good job. Alright. Get in there. Kill them. Archers. Fire on the cell swords. Do it. Give it to him. They do have double hit points as well, which is... I don't know. That might, that might turn out to be incredibly overpowered. <laughs> we'll see. They're effectively Nazgai on wargs. How high is their attack, actually? And are they armor-piercing? They are not armor-piercing, but they have 11 attack and 8 charge. That is fairly high stats. Don't want any stupid bums. You just want to get shot to death. Is that what you want? I don't think that's what you really want. Alright, kill their general, and then those cells might even rout if I pop a terror of the Nazgul on them. 
Ooh, my chat is very squeaky today. But yeah, to all the people that have been clamoring for me to take Gunt for like... Well, every episode, pretty much. Your prayers have finally been answered. Alright, bandits. If Reavers can't even be bandits, I'm very worried. And they're just beating up the general, I think. Probably has a lot of hit points, seeing as he's the faction heir. Uh, I'm really curious to know how the rest of the war against Anadwaith is going, because they hold probably a large amount of territory in Minariath. So, I don't know. I don't know if we'll regicide them, for example. Alright, behold the city. The wind's going crazy outside. My microphone... I hope it picks it up, actually, so you, you know what I'm talking about. It's going absolutely mental. There we go. Chieftain Donshaith. I don't speak Gaelic, and I know that the new names... Or pretty much all the names of the Anna's White Thruster are inspired or straight up Gaelic, but I do not speak a shred of Gaelic, I'm sorry. I'm sure some of you in the comments do. And you might feel horribly offended by my terrible pronunciations. <laughs> the power of the terror of the Nazgul, friends. You press it and it just immediately ends the battle in a victory. 31 casualties, 212 dead on their side, and the settlement of Gund is now ours. Beautiful. And there we go. The first show of force of the Nazgul, and they do not disappoint. Um, let's sack it. I don't want to keep the army moving, but I don't want to destroy all the population and everything they've built. Well, it's pretty all right settlement for a little village, bringing a decent amount of cash. All right, let's already plop a watchtower. Go one even further, one step. Oh, I went one tile too far, I think. Yep, damn it. So they do hold mile. I can't even right click it. This place, mile run. Uh, and this is Parthiaur, Kirithiaur over here. Then that's. We're, I think we're bordering Gondor now. <laughs> Alright, Kalanhad, still in the hands of Mordor. Although I think they had a big fight and their big army is gone. Oh no, it's right there. If I could take Kalanhad, I could defend it against a lot of things, because that's a Gondor-type castle, so that has Ballista Towers. Oh, there's Grishnak, the faction heir. How is he the faction heir? Uh, I guess all the Nazgul are already gone. I thought they, they left Mordor one by one, or two by two. Um, but I think they're already gone for Mordor, they've already lost them. Now they're non-existent, and then trickle in slowly but surely to me. I think that's what's happening. I swear to God, are you besieging... You're besieging it again, aren't you? No, you're not. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So that means that Gondor should have a big advantage against Mordor, seeing as they don't have the Nazgul. The Nazgul are so strong, even in auto-resolve. Because they have the... Um, for, Gon uh, for Mordor, they have the Temple Marksmen and Temple Wards, right? Unless they've already been changed, I'm not sure. They are getting different bodyguards based on their backstory. Which I'm personally not 100% a fan of that change, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, Eisen Run one more turn, we can upgrade that. I'll just save money for that, because I feel like Eisen Run can actually become quite a wealthy settlement. Lots of trade routes, lots of roads going on there. Okay, so how is Dunland doing? They're doing alright here, Old Bregnas. And this is then Mylranaith. It's a settlement over here, which we will take soon. It's just a matter of who holds these settlements here. Luigi is still held by Enidwaith as well, so Dunland is not doing fantastic, they're doing alright. Enidwaith and Gondor are allies now, ooh, okay. They have joined against us. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. The Lower Gland is in the hands of Khazad Doom, interesting. And I'm just curious to see what the Elves of Lothborian will do. If we can take the settlements without, you know, too much trouble... That could bring in a lot of cash. And then Khazad Doom afterwards. That should sort out our current economic deficiencies quite nicely. That's still a big if, of course. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, those are probably the wealthiest elements in the area. And I don't want to go straight after Minas Tirith, for example. As ballsy as that would be and as fun as that would be. Not the best uh, strategy, I would say. Although it worked out for our other name campaign, of course, which I still have fond memories of. Oh, what a fun campaign that was. But uh, I've even had some people saying that uh, the current Isengard campaign is actually their favorite. That, uh, this one's the best one yet. Oh, is that an invasion? Oh, shit. Take Tirith Anduin for 2k. Oh, I didn't even need to throw the money my way. I was going to do it anyway. Karaz oh, okay. 
Okay, I feel like when Isengard betrays Sauron, the first invasion, or this is not the first invasion, right? The, uh, well, the first invasion should absolutely be called an Isengard as an extra challenge. We'll take that, but that will be for the next episode. I'm sorry, Dr. Dre. You go chilling, Rob. Oh, actually, you're bringing less cash. I'll just give you the army already. So I don't want you chill there for now. The guard, you move north. North. The king in the north. I'm going to put the pike unit at Alberg. Seeing as our border is moving, we don't need that many troops there. You can go to Alberg as well. And these crossbows, they can go towards Rockberg. And then Eisenrun can get upgraded. Nice. Alright, good. Um, Want to pull out as many forces as possible. I'll leave the Reavers behind. There we go. We keep the peace. Let's see what we can run into over here. Start taking some Gondor settlements. Yeah, we're bordering Enidwaith quite a bit now. Karas. Okay. Let's see what else they've got for us. What they'll be throwing our way. Um, right. What? The, but, mouse! Stop! Arr. What can I build? Rockberg, can't upgrade that. Nope. Draw weight. I could get a port there. That's actually not too bad. I'm gonna get the hunting lodge. Although, no, let's get the port. I can trade with. Well, Lothlorien for now, still. And Dol Guldur. So that's quite good, actually. But anyway, the invasion called on Karaz Galathon is quite good. That's going to be a welcome distraction. And once they start flocking that up north, although they might pass through my territory to reach it, I can just waltz in there and take settlements like Limir, Edrekan, and then the invasion stack and deal with the um, the Garrison army, or uh, the Doomstack army, and I don't have to worry about a single thing. Alright, uh, I do believe that's going to be it for today's episode. So we took Aldberg, we got the end, uh, not the end, we got the Nazgul. We're about to take Tirithanduin, we took Gund, we cleaned up some rebels. We're just pushing on all fronts, taking more settlements. Let's see, we have 12 regions already. Um, cleaned up some rebels as well, making more money than before. Things are looking quite alright. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I hope to catch you soon for episode number 8.